town hall last night. Some political reporters calling it an infomercial for the former vice president. The event was billed as a forum for undecided voters seeking answers, but none of the questions challenged Biden on his decades-long political record. Howie Kurtz is a Fox News media analyst and the host of Media Buzz. Howard, it's always great to see you. I, I want to play, put this quote up Thanks. from Politico. This is from Mark Caputo. He says, following here, NBC's town hall with Joe Biden and undecided voters in Miami didn't seem to have undecided voters, nor was it much of a Miami town hall, which would have way more yelling and pointed questions. It was a TV show that doubled as a Biden infomercial can't blame him for doing it. Is that a proper assessment in your view, Howie? Well, I was just amazed that Lester Holt's first half dozen questions uh, to Joe Biden were basically inviting him to criticize President Trump on his hospitalization and his handling of COVID. Biden, when during that primetime hour, was never pressed on the details of his record at one point. Uh, the NBC anchor said, well, they say you haven't accomplished anything in 47 years. That's an easy pitch to hit. Most of the audience questioners were very sympathetic. Funny, the same thing happened at Biden's recent CNN town hall. And the toughest one, I think, was how do you deal with bullies? So uh, it certainly was not exactly a grilling of a guy who might be the next president. Yeah, and the day the caller is uh, Greg Price. He goes on to say the following here. I just watched that entire hour-long NBC News town hall with Joe Biden. No questions about whether he will pack the court, nuke the filibuster, or add D.C. and Puerto Rico as states. And that's the question. How do you do a town hall and the, the question of your Supreme Court potential nominees and whether you're going to pack the court, how does it not come up? It's issue one, Howie. Yeah, it seems to me that that would be right at the top of the agenda. I mean, you can't ask about everything, but nevertheless, I really didn't see Biden being pressed. And the contrast with the way that the media treat President Trump could not be starker. Yeah, you're exactly right. I just want to put this on the screen very quickly because we talked about undecided voters and they weren't. Just a quick breakdown. You don't have to comment on it. One undecided lean towards Biden, one registered Republican lean towards Biden, one former Republican, one Republican who voted for Hillary Clinton, one undecided truly, and six unidentified of the 11 questions that were asked to him. Now I'll move on, Howie, if I can, because your op-ed about the president conducting COVID, it reads the following here. Uh, we we have no way of knowing at this point how the president's health battle will play out or the impact on the last weeks of the campaign. But the days of mixed messaging certainly didn't help his cause. Speaking, of course, when the doctors were saying different things than the White House. Your thoughts? Talk about self-inflicted wounds. I mean, you had a weekend of confusion and contradiction, whether it was the president's doctor, Sean Conley, uh, not disclosing that he'd been twice on supplemental oxygen, or chief of staff Mark Meadows providing a reality check by telling reporters there had been serious concern about the president's vital signs. But since he was released from Walter Reed last night, uh, there has been, forgive me, uh, negative coverage on steroids. I mean, yes, there are legitimate questions to be raised about the president uh, being out of breath as he walked up the White House steps, taken off the mask before he went inside the mansion and saying, uh, you know, uh, we don't, uh, you, we can defeat COVID when not everybody has access to the same medical care. But listening and watching the coverage, so many of the journalists and pundits seemed distraught, almost angry about the fact that he got out of the hospital rather than breathing some sigh of relief uh, that the president at least was well enough to go back to the medical unit at the White House. Yeah, one, one reporter calling him coronavirus in chief. It's, yeah, it just seems to be a little bit um, off base. Howie Kurtz, great to see you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Trace.